this is the fourth section and I believe the final section of the hypothesis testing chapter two tail test and now we look at um, doing a two tail test this is when you split the significance level in half and maybe you're looking uh, for a value uh, that's an increase or a decrease and we know it's a two tail test because h1 will always say something like the probability is not equal to and then you'll have some probability here that's the key because that means that it could be a decrease or an increase now we can cut down the work we need to do we don't actually need to look at the upper tail and lower tail we just look at one now how do we decide well in our question we're going to have what we call an observed value so that observed value is going to be 11 out of 12 11 out of 20 people were successful in a drug uh, 7 out of 10 people bought the new improved sandwiches um, 15 out of uh, 100 people uh, were involved in road accidents so that's our observed value that first number that something out of something and we're going to compare that with n times p now that n times p comes from the numbers that we have in the brackets here yeah n and p so n is the the trial size the sample size and p is the probability of success yeah probability of success now when we work out n times p we're actually working out the mean n times p is actually the mean and what we're doing we're comparing what we observe to the mean now if what we observe is less than the mean n times p we do a lower tail test if what we have observed is less than the mean n times p we do a lower tail test if what we observe is greater than the mean n times p we do an upper tail test all that's doing when we work out n times p and compare it with the observed value it's telling us which end is it closer to is it closer to the upper tail or the lower tail that's all it's telling us and um, with that information we can decide whether we're going to do an upper tail or a lower tail test so even though it's a two tail test that's really telling you to split this significance level but really we're only looking at one tail the upper or the lower tail by looking at this bit of information here what we observe compared to the mean which is n times p over a long period of time it has been found that Enrico's restaurant the ratio of non-vegetarian meals to vegetarian meals is two to one in Manuel's restaurant a random sample of 10 people ordering meals one ordered a vegetarian meal using a five percent uh, level of significance test whether or not the proportion of people eating vegetarian meals in Manuel's restaurant is different to that in Enrico's restaurant right so first of all what is the proportion of people that we would normally expect to be buying vegetarian meals well if um, if the ratio of vegetarian meals is two to one that basically means for every three meals that are bought um, one is vegetarian I didn't read that correctly it says ratio of non-vegetarian to vegetarian meals is two to one so for every three meals bought one is a um, vegetarian meal that's right yeah um, what we're looking at yeah we want to know whether or not the proportion of people in management personal is different it doesn't say more or less so h1 is going to be is the proportion different to a third our significance level is 
5%, uh, but that gets split in half because it's a two-tail test. So actually our significance level at each end, whether it's upper or lower, and we'll decide in a minute, is only 2.5%. So that's going to be our cutoff point. Right, what does X stand for? So we also always say what X stands for. Okay, what did we actually observe? What did we count? Well, it was the number of people um, uh, ordered were ordering vegetarian meals in Manuel's restaurants. That's what we counted. Yeah, what did we observe? So X is the number of people who bought a veggie meal in whose restaurant was it? Manuel's restaurant. Manuel's restaurant okay restaurant now let's write down what our distribution is it's a binomial distribution because we've got a sample of how many people um 10 now what what's the probability it's a third and we need to work out the probability of now we need to decide whether we're looking for an increase uh, or sorry, not an increase or decrease, upper tail or lower tail. So this is where we compare our observed value, which was one. One person was observed to have the vegetarian meal. And we compare that to N times P. Now, if I do uh, N times P, so I do 10 times a third, I basically get 10 over 3 which is three and a third, three and a third. So because what I observed is less than the mean, I'm just going to look in the lower tail, lower tail only. So it's not actually a lower tail test. I'm only looking in the lower tail, which means I'm actually going to put less than or equal to. Now, how many people were observed to have the meal? One. And I'm going to work out this probability. So we grab our calculators. Um, we go to menu and seven. Binomial um, CD variable. X is one. N is ten. Probability is the third. And I get a probability of. Um, Let's get this 0 0.003308. Sorry, I got that wrong because I typed in N as 20. I'm not sure why. I, should, I don't know if I said 20, but it should be um, N is 10, not 20. So it seemed a bit small. 0 0.1040 to four decimal places. Okay, so that's 4dp. Now, what do we do? We compare that probability with our significance level. So basically, we're comparing 10.4% with our cutoff level of 2.5%. Remember, we split the significance level because it's a two-tail test. We're looking for a change. Now, what we observed... Um, that probability is greater than 2.5%. So we don't see anything wrong going on here. We don't see any change. We don't see any problems. So the next thing we write down is um, we're going to accept hate zero, or you might even write down that since the, the probability of X less than or equal to one is greater than 2.5%, we'd ex accept hate zero and then the last thing that we say that there is not enough evidence, enough evidence to suggest the proportion of people or customers buying uh, veggie meals, meals in Manuel's restaurant, mess 
restaurant is different to Enrico's restaurant. It's almost like an essay, this answer. It's like a little short novel. So you should now be able to exercise 70 on pages, 108 to 109 in the textbook. I suppose the only thing that probably need to write down as a little recap here is comparing you, what you observed, your observed value, comparing that to n times p, which is basically the mean. You could use this symbol for it. The mean of a binomial distribution, that's what it is. And if what we observe is less than the uh, mean, we basically are going to investigate the lower tail. So it's not really a lower tail test, we just investigate the lower tail. If the observed value is greater than the mean, we investigate or we only look at the upper tail. Saves you work. Yeah, you don't really need to look at a tail if there's really, uh, that's not really where the observed value is or what it's closer to.